guys are I'm back. Going all in. Uh, which is right. a perfect segue to the New York Times story that came out on the Friday after Thanksgiving, November 27th. The rich kids who want to tear down capitalism, socialist-minded millennials, millennial heirs are trying to live their values by getting rid of their money. Lately, Sam Jacobs, and I'll read just a little bit of it, has been having a lot of conversations with his family's lawyers. He's trying to gain access to his trust of 30, his $30 million trust fund. At 25, he's hit the age where many heirs can blow their money on harebrained businesses or a stable of sports cards. He doesn't want to do that. But by wealth management standards, his plans are just as bad. He wants to give it all away. I want to build a world where someone like me, a young person who controls tens of millions of dollars is possible. A socialist is college. Mr. Jacob sees his family's extreme plutocratic wealth as both a moral and economic failure. His parents well, must be very proud of him. First of all, Sam Jacobs <laughs> sounds like an idiot and he shouldn't have any money. <laughs> so hopefully he gets his wish. Why did his parents give him $30 million? This trust fund should be like given to somebody who deserves it. Like, yeah, but but what what Sam what Sam, what Sam Jacobs wants doesn't mean that Sam Jacobs gets to decide for everybody else. And just because that he wants to live in a communist country, he can go and find one. And the reality is, like you know, we just talked about AlphaFold. Well, guess what? You know, there's four of us on this on this podcast today that over the next twenty or thirty years are more than likely going to invest hundreds of millions of dollars in protein design. And uh, I don't do that with any um sense of um shame um and i'm glad that Stuart butterfield made me you know a lot of money because it's going to go go back into the world in positive ways and you know maybe if my children are taught properly um they'll be able to take a small piece of that and they'll decide that you know there's uh something else that's important to them but the reality is that everybody should be allowed to make their own decisions and i don't want somebody like him especially a 25 year old dipshit telling me or my kids who even though they're you know under the age of 15 are probably smarter than him what to do david when you read this article uh if you did read it uh what were your thoughts um Especially in regards yeah. to parenting and thinking about our own kids, because that's yeah. what I started thinking about. I was like, oh my God, what if one of my daughters wants to take her trust fund and just throw it into the wind? I, I really don't want yeah. communist- the part. Wait, hold on. I just want to say one more thing. The part that's completely reasonable and that I respect is, is this this 25 year old seems to have come to a decision. What I find completely unreasonable and, you know, just completely lathered with insecurity is his need to then project it and say it has to be true for everybody else as well. And, and the, the grand arcing statements of how it should never be just completely betrays, you know, what we've learned in how society functionally works. Like, if you want democracy, the only sort of economic philosophy that's been partnered with with democracy to work well as capitalism. And so if you want to change one, you're going to have to change the other. And just the fact that, you know, with all of his education, the hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, didn't get a course in civics to understand that is kind of sad. I just, before you go, David, I have to yeah. read one comment because it's so deranged that it almost seems like it was part of a script to like some billions or secession. Um, Heirs whose wealth have come from specific sources sometimes use that history to guide their giving. That's a New York Times saying that. Pierce de la Hunt, a 32-year-old socialist anarchist, Marxist communist, or all of the above, has a trust fund that was financed by their former stepfather's outlet mall empire. When I, and this is uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. I'm sorry, MX. I've never seen that before. De la Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> How do you pronounce Max Hunt? <laughs> How do you pronounce MX? MX de la Hunt takes non-gendered pronouns. Has anybody seen MX? I've never seen that. That was the first time, yeah. That's the it's, first for me. So I guess it's, if you're it's, non-gender. So, so you don't have to say Mr. or Miss or Mrs. Got it. Or it's like Latinx yeah. where you just can yeah, group right. a bunch of people into one thing. I got it. Right. Um, this is what uh, MX de la Hunt says. I'm just trying to figure out how it's pronounced. Maxis Hunt de la Hunt. Um, when <laughs> taking a shot, you're, you're, Jason, you're you're not showing respect for his pronouns. I don't want to get canceled. It just is kind of hard to pronounce MX. I don't mean to laugh, but I need I need somebody to tell me how to pronounce MX dot com. Um, <laughs> but this is the quote that is so insane. <laughs> when I think about outlet malls. And I think this is what we all think about when we think about outlet malls. When I think about outlet malls, I think about intersectional oppression. 
Well, it's the first thing that comes to mind, Freeberg, when you think of an outlet mall. Oh my Certainly, God. it's intersectional can oppression I, or a subway. You know, I, look, I just can I just point out, like the um, the New York Times has become a little bit sensationalist. Like, you know, if you were to ask statistically what percentage of people that are inheriting wealth are going to be stupid like this, the answer would probably be pretty low. But they find the one or two characters like this and they build the story around them and then people extrapolate that as if that is the persona of the entire population of people that are going to inherit some degree of wealth. And that becomes so the story. And I'm just so sick of it. Like, I don't read the New York Times anymore. And look, I love the New York Times. I would read it every single day. I still have it on my phone. I still pay for my subscription. But I'm so sick of the narrative being written by the author's objective. And then they go and find one or two facts that meet that narrative. And rather than speaking about it statistically and saying, we surveyed 100 people that were wealthy, this is how many. And if it, if it was 60% of them saying, I'm going to go give away all my wealth and do crazy great. shit. Great. Like, that's the story. But, but, again, but, but picking, picking, a, picking an individual and building the narrative around that individual as if that is the... No, but David, kind of, but David, and yeah. that's the point. It's like, what they do is they don't even talk about people who want to give their money away. What they do is they create these caricatures around yeah. this, like, judge, judgment. Totally. It's it's all totally. about this, like, judgment. It's like, you know, I am, it's virtue. It's like, I am holier than everybody else because of these decisions that I made. And I just find it so offensive. Now, here's, can I just tell you, I had my physical last week and I have a doctor in LA who's superb and he's, he's in many ways sort of a philosopher king to me. He's been incredibly important in my life. And, you know, I talked to, Agus? I talked to his name, his name is Christian Renna uh, at Lifespan Medicine. But uh, anyways, um, and here's what you're, and I talked to Chris about raising kids and Chris has seen, you know, thousands of people over the course of his, you know, journey as a primary care physician. And he's seen the kids of these folks and et cetera. And, you know, he, he boiled it down to me. It's like, um, you know, your job as a parent is to make sure that your children um, have incredible tools married with incredible habits. And so some of these things are very simple, like food and, you know, how to eat and self-care and exercise. But some of these things are really important, which is a worldview, empathy. And he uses this word, which is called awareness. And awareness is this idea that you understand the world around you. And that's an incredibly difficult thing for parents to be able to teach their kids. But it seems like if you could give them that, that's independent of anything other than time and care, right? It doesn't matter whether you're rich or you're poor. It doesn't really matter whether you're black or you're white. You can really teach the concept of awareness and empathy. And then the other thing that he taught me was, you know, there's a really big difference between folks like you, me, meaning guys like me, who grew up poor, and who are focused on the generation of money, right? Meaning making money. And some of you make it, some of you don't, but you're living in this existential threat that you feel is hanging over you. And so you go out and you make it. And a lot of it is driven by this insecurity you've had since you were young. But make no mistake, your children's lives is harder than yours. And it's about the utilization of money. And whether they want to give it away or whether they want to use it, you have a responsibility to teach them, whether you're giving them a dollar, a million dollars, or a billion dollars. And this is where I think somewhere along the way, these kids as parents, you know, may or may not have done the best. Maybe they did the best they could. But somewhere along the way, these gaps are, are obvious, at least in the telling of the article. And this is where I go back to, if you're really going to talk to about something like this, which actually is quite important, because again, we're going to go through the the most enormous wealth transfer in the history of the world in the next 20 years, $30 trillion. That could, so talk about that. If, if enough people took their inheritance and decided to eradicate student debt, it would be 3% of what's going to be inherited over the next 20 years. Think about it. So obviously you can do some incredible things, but it's not framed in the right way. It doesn't promote the right kind of discussion. And all it is is salacious reporting that makes these kids look like caricatures. And by the way, remember that money today is invested somewhere. So to pull that 3% out would have a kind of triple, kind of rippling and kind of um, probably deleterious effect on, on, yeah, uh, these are, you know, these are yeah. lower. No, I, no, I, I, no, forget about that. It's like okay. factories, family but, owned but this businesses. Is, this, this is my point also is I think that there's a responsibility to these stewards of capital, right? They, they, they may be, you can call them wealthy all you want, but they really are the people that pull the strings on where money's moving. Um, and there's, a, I think, you know, to your point, kind of a, a degree of responsibility that inevitably has to kind of sit with this, uh, this group. Um, because but here, 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 here's the problem with it is if they just want to give their money away 
to a charity that they thought was worthy and that and they were willing to live like you know monks or something and not need money that'd be fine you know we could respect that but the reason why they're in such a hurry to get rid of this wealth is because they feel like money itself is ill-gotten that wealth itself is is by definition ill-gotten it must have come from at the expense of somebody else right it, 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 you only could have gotten that wealth by ripping people off and that is the thing that, that that's the idea that's really pernicious about this sort of like socialism movement is they don't really understand that the way capitalism works, you only get rich by selling something to somebody that they want that makes their life better, right? I mean, all of us are engaged in the creation of new technologies and new products and that makes the world better and people are willing to pay for that. And that's what creates value and, and that's what creates wealth. And it's really just kind of sad that people you know, or it, and it goes beyond this article on these trust fund kids, but this whole uh, condemnation of capitalism and this attack on any, you know, on billionaires or whatever. Um, the problem with it is it doesn't recognize the way that value is created for everybody. Can I, uh, um, can I give you a quote yeah. um, from Walter Williams, who uh, just passed away, who's a very famous uh, economist. Prior to capitalism, the way people amassed great wealth was by looting plundering and enslaving their fellow man capitalism made it possible to become wealthy by serving your fellow man and that's really true and somewhere along the exactly. way folks folks have lost the script and have all of a sudden gone back to prehistoric capitalist times and um I, th I think that we don't have enough good examples of constructive capitalism that prove that this is not a bad word yeah, and, yeah, and I give to get, to get, let me give it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, I love the Walter Williams quote. Um, just to give another example, Jeff Bezos just gave ten billion dollars to uh, climate change. And ten you know what? billion this kid, dollars. Teddy, what's the kid's name? Teddy Schaefer or something like that. The journalist has been riding him on Twitter. I think he works for Vox or something. Like they have basically been attacking Bezos since he made the announcement that he hasn't done enough. And it's like ten billion dollars is the largest contribution ever made. Uh, to a single cause. I mean, obviously, right. uh, Bill Gates and how did he do that? Foundation. Right. And how did he do that? Because he created Amazon, which has created enormous value for all of us. Imagine if one of these kids in the article, instead of just giving their money away, they, by the way, it looks like there's a bunch of organizations that have sprung up to scam these kids out of their trust fund. It's sort of, you know, a fool oh, yeah. in their money. Or, there was a fool in their marks. money are soon parted. There's a whole bunch of, of, yeah. of scam artists of who, marks. who are trying yeah. to scam these kids. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're definitely getting scammed. But imagine if instead of just getting scammed out of their money, they were to use it to create a business that created a new product or technology that served people. Then maybe they could turn that thirty million into ten billion, like and, Bezos did. And and if they lost it, they would have done it in the pursuit of something really grand. And so nobody would actually instead you know, of virtue signaling, instead of virtue signaling on the New York Times. <laughs> yeah, like these guys were so glad to be in the New York Times to dunk on capitalists and dunk and literally dunk on their own parents. Think about that. You hate your parents so much, you have to go to the New York Times and tell them how much you hate them. 